a very good evening to all dear brothers and sisters in christ so last uh, few days uh, we studied a very important subject uh, about trinity we saw that uh, <clears throat> trinity is nowhere given in the bible okay then the concept of trinity is there in the bible that also we saw that concept of trinity where uh, three are one is not there in the bible at all <clears throat> so the three are different the holy spirit is the power of god and jesus christ is the son of god and uh, almighty god is the one who is the creator of this universe so <clears throat> as soon as we say that uh, you see uh, the jesus uh, is not god is uh, so many people will feel offended <clears throat> because they believe that uh, jesus died for us jesus is a very loving uh, you see <clears throat> lord he was very sympathetic he was very loving he is very kind very affectionate but when you say about god everybody thinks that god is a very a powerful one is full of wrath and uh, he was so full of wrath and anger that uh, you see he could not forgive even the sin of man but jesus uh, you see to pacify the anger of god he came in between and took all the sins upon himself and saved us from the wrath of god so that's the general idea about uh, you see god therefore in a school <clears throat> when a teacher was asking everybody small children what are you going to do when you go to heaven the first thing what you are going to do when you go to heaven everybody replied uh, various things but one child uh, he told that uh, as soon as you go to heaven immediately i'll uh, hide behind uh, jesus so as soon as you see god i'll immediately run and hide behind jesus and teacher asked uh, why what happened uh, no no yo if uh, god sees me he will immediately put me you see into uh, uh, fire and immediately destroy me i'll get consumed in his anger so i can't stand before god but jesus is very loving very kind very passionate so i'll be behind him that is the <coughs> general uh, concept about uh, god but dear brethren if you see god was bound uh, by his uh, justice you see it was god's provision that uh, he sacrificed his only begotten son to save the entire mankind god had no other option and uh, he had no other option to violate uh, god's justice the foundation of god's throne the bible says uh, is a uh, you see his judgment and justice which he could not violate at any cost psalms 89:14 <clears throat> can somebody read psalms 89:14 justice and judgments are the habit habitation of any sorry habitation of thy throne mercy and truth shall go before thy face see judgment and justice the habitation of thy throne god's uh, you see uh, thrones uh, foundation itself is it, uh, justice he could not uh, violate justice and forgive adam for his sin but uh, once his justice was satisfied it is his love it is his mercy that he sacrifices only son therefore in john 3:16 we read that god so loved the world you see he loved so much uh, <clears throat> you see that he gave his only begotten son imagine if a, a child in the home is not feeling well dear brethren really who is the one who suffers the most uh, you see it is actually the parents uh, they can't see the children suffering they can't see the children in pain they can't see them just lying in the bed uh, this was the feeling of god uh, the entire mankind you see was in the condemned to death god had no other choice but uh, it was his love that after condemning uh, mankind that uh, gave his only son so if you see you see god also suffered much because of this one it is not so easy to sacrifice uh, one son and god had to make a decision to choose uh, between his only begotten son always a loving son always a obedient son and a sinner but god chose the sinners above christ it is like choosing 
You see, uh, Barabbas and Christ. We have seen the passion of Christ. Uh, the crowd will be crying, Barabbas, Barabbas, Barabbas. You see, they were willing to give up Jesus. Uh, that was the justice of God. God was even ready to give his son. Therefore, all the blessings of God are through Jesus. Therefore, in the Bible, Jesus is called as the right hand of God. Right hand means what? A chief favor. You see, a, a most uh, you see favorable uh, you see, side given to the very important person. So, Jesus in the Bible is called as the arm of the Lord. Let us read Isaiah 51.5. Uh, Muna, sister, can you read Isaiah 51.5? <clears throat> my righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arm shall judge the people. The arm shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust. See? And on mine arm shall they trust. Again in Isaiah 53.1 it says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Jesus is called the arm of the Lord. Why? Why Jesus is called as the right hand and the arm of the Lord? Because, you see, <clears throat> whenever we bless somebody or whenever we shake hand somebody, which is the hand that we use? Though we are a left-hander, we use the right hand. That is a very, very important thing, dear brethren. Therefore, in God's plan and all the blessings, all the grace, mercy, you see, are bestowed of God through his right hand, Jesus. Therefore, Jesus in the Bible is called as the right hand of God. Dear brethren, <coughs> you see, God can be understood in various ways. And one of the ways to understand God is about his wonderful creation, which he has created for the whole world. Just to see the beautiful design of the universe, the beautiful earth which he has created, the air which we breathe, the water which we drink. You see, the water, what beautifully God has created, he has created it in three layers. You see, in three forms, Solid, liquid, and gas. You see, the solid state of uh, uh, water, it controls the environment of the earth and keeps it cool. And the clouds, uh, you see, and the gaseous form of the water, uh, this uh, helps us to give, uh, you see, <coughs> shadow, you see. And uh, it gives us rain. That is the thing which God has formed. Uh, you see, and uh, water, in the form of water, in the liquid, liquid form of water, you see, that is a wonderful creation of God. And just imagine what color which God has given to this water. It is a transparent color. Water doesn't have any color at all. Is there any taste for this uh, water? Is it uh, having salt or is it having, uh, you see, uh, sweet? No, this water doesn't have any taste. It doesn't have any odor. You see, it doesn't have any color. Imagine if God would have given a little bit of color also, what would have happened? You see, so many companies would have taken the patent. You see, if it was, if God would have made it a little bit brown, you see, color, then immediately Coca-Cola company would have told, oh, this is our, I am going to apply a patent. Or if it is God would have made it a orange color, a Fanta company, you see, they would have put a patent. You see, dear brethren, God knew that uh, if it is made of any color, people will quarrel. That is the reason God has made it transparent. Without any color, without any taste. Dear brother, nobody can claim that this is my water. You see, that is the creation of God. And moreover, can you ever imagine? Man has developed into so much things. His knowledge has increased. But has he found out a device where he can invent water? No, there are so many inventions that are done. But still, even today, man has not been able to invent water, to create water. It's just two compounds, oxygen and hydrogen, combined together. It gives so beautiful, you see, and a form of water. You see, nobody can imitate it. Nobody can duplicate it. Just see the usage of water. Each and everything we use in our world, 
it is made out of water you take anything <clears throat> early in the morning we use water to brush our teeth huh? to wash our face imagine if water is not there how you see how our pathetic our condition will be we can't even go outside our, our breath will be you see bad breath but god has given us water dear brethren and uh, does god charge us for this water it is free of cost imagine in such a big hospital where there is a very expensive and a costly operation is happening huh? where all the different types of medicines are used after all the operation has been done doctor washes his hands with water he doesn't use detol i doesn't use medicines he doesn't use chemicals to wash it though he might use it at last he will definitely use water to make him thoroughly clean even the device is sterilized how because of water imagine if water is not there brethren what will the condition of this world this is the creation of god and see the beautiful creation of what various types of vegetables god has given us imagine if god would have made only one vegetable you see uh, just uh, a pumpkin daily eating pumpkin pumpkin would have got fed up but god knew what is good for us he discovered variety variety of vegetables dear brethren you see and each and every vegetables has got its own proteins and vitamins all these things god has given for mankind just see the wonderful uh, you see the plants uh, and the trees you see each and every tree each and every plant has its own futures you see the leaves uh, you see it is cleanly bifurcated uh, each and every tree each and every leaf has veins you see what uh, is that we put for this uh, plants uh, just some uh, waste water and uh, waste garbage you can say dung also you see some fertilizers it gives us so beautiful color you see as soon as we see these trees uh, you see we feel happy isn't it whenever we feel bored <clears throat> where do we go you see we all go to uh, sightseeing you see places where nature is there uh, where we can enjoy and see the god's creation and appreciate him dear brethren why because that is the creation of god you see even the beautiful flowers which god has created each and every flower is different of itself just test the beautiful petal nobody not even the silk the cotton costly silk can replace that one just uh, see the fragrance of the rose you see dear brethren each and every flower has its own fragrance as soon as we smell it gives us a pleasant feeling you see it revives us all these things you see god has created and above all just to see the wonderful universe dear brethren just lift up our eyes in the night and ski you see and see the sky the dark sky god has created millions millions of stars you see the scientists say you see each and every stars are actually each and every sun it seems at the nearest star <clears throat> to the earth is the alpha century you know how near it is you see it's not so far it's very near very near we can aram say we can travel but we need to travel at the light of speed now what is the light of speed if you see it uh, light travels at the speed of uh, you see huh? 1 lakh uh, 86000 miles uh, per second if you travel at such a speed non stop for 4 and a half light years then immediately will first reach the nearest star in our system that is the alpha century imagine dear brethren if you want to reach this alpha century if you go in the apollo crew that went to moon you see but failed you see we will take eight and a half lakh years to reach it seems sir such you see stars in our milky way galaxy is uh, more than 100 billion an average distance between each and every star is more than 6 uh, light years uh, and to cross this entire uh, you see uh, system itself uh, you see the galaxy itself uh, it will take uh, more than 1 lakh uh, light years it seems to be then and such galaxy 
as man can observe the scientists say it's uh, more than 10 billion galaxies uh, you see the bible says god calls all the stars by name it seems just imagine god remembering and calling each and every star by its own name god has kept name for everybody you see, for each and every star, there is a particular name. A particular orbit is fixed. Let us read that verse in Isaiah 40, 26. Brother. <clears throat> Isaiah 40, 26. Um, uh, Romy Star, can you read? Isaiah 40, 26. Okay. <clears throat> Lift, lift up your eyes on high and behold who hath created these things that right out their hosts by numbers he calleth them all by name by the greatness of his might for that he is strong in power not one fail failure See? Lift up your eyes on high. Behold, who hath created these things? He bringeth out their host by number. Each and every galaxies, stars are fixed by number. Scientists say it's infinite. We can't calculate. Yes. The Bible says he calls it by number. He called them by the names. Dear brethren, that is the power of our God. In Isaiah 48, 13, it says, Mine hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth. I am a right hand has spanned the heavens, it seems. You see, we can't measure that one. The scientists today, even also after inventing so many telescopes, you see, that say the space is infinite. They can't measure it. But scientists can't measure it. But God has measured it by the span, which means... This is uh, our greatness. God calls each and every one by names means what? Uh, God has fixed uh, a particular orbit uh, <clears throat> for all this, uh, you see, uh, stars to rotate on. You see, he calls them by names means what? Uh, fixed the rot rotation process. Uh, you see, we don't even remember our brother's names. Uh, we can't even remember uh, the phone number of uh, certain people. Uh, but God, you see, calls each and every star by his name. That's the reason Job was asked by God. You see, in Job 38, 31 and 32. Huh? Read. Uh, Ashish brother, can you read? Job 38, 31, 32. Can thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or lose the bands of Orion? Can thou bring forth Mazaroth in his season? Or can the guide Arcturus with his sons? You see, he is questioning Job. Can the bind the sweet influences of Pleiades? A constellation, can you bind it? Can you bring forth together the family in its own season? Can you guide it properly? Mankind, even after having so much of technology, they are not able to properly guide aircraft today. Even after having so much of radars, you see, so much of systems, uh, there's frequently air uh, crashes that are happening. Uh, you see, just a few thousands of aircraft, uh, man is not able to control it. Uh. Think about God. You see, millions, 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 trillions. Uh, say God, Calls each and everything by name. You see, the scientists say <clears throat> that each and every star is a sun, it seems. They are so huge and so big, uh, it is much more uh, greater than our sun, it seems. And our sun, compared to these various stars, it is nothing, it seems. Uh, so big and so huge. Dear brethren, have you ever wondered, uh, even if there is so much of uh, sun, in this outer universe. Why there is darkness in the outer universe? Isn't it? 
when God uh, brings the sun early in the morning, you see, we have light everywhere. You see, there's not a place that is, there is no light. Everywhere there is light. But uh, once when the sun sets, if you on the tube light also, if you on various, uh, all the lights also, we won't get that brightness. Uh, that is the power of the sun. Imagine. So much of high voltage it's emitting. See the brightness. Uh, you see, that is the power of the sun. The scientists say each and every stars are a sun. Then there are so many suns in the universe. Uh, why there is pitch darkness? Uh, there should be brightness. There should be light everywhere. No. You see, we can see this uh, image. We will be seeing how the comparison of our uh, universe, uh, you see, uh, to the earth and the sun. You see, this is our sun. As you keep on going, uh, you can see our sun is nothing before uh, many, many great suns. Uh, you see, it is just a, a small dot uh, in a plate, you can see. Because, see, Arcturus, Job, uh, in the book of Job is mentioned, uh, compared to our sun, is much more greater and larger than our sun. Why there is no light? Uh, you see, the phenomena of light is that uh, if a light has to, you see, shine brightly, the light has to fall on an object so it gets reflected. Then only we will get light. If there is no object to reflect, even though you on any light, it has no use at all. What does it mean? It means though there are lot of sun in the galaxy. Lot of stars which are much brighter than our galaxy. See, this is our uh, galaxy. We are just exiting our galaxy. We can't even imagine where is our earth. It is completely dissolved. Even if though there are so much of uh, sun, why there is no brightness? Because space doesn't have an end where the sun rays can go and fall and reflect. That is the reason science and scientists say space is infinite. It has no end. That is what the Bible also says. That uh, even before the day, there is God. Read Isaiah 43.13. Isaiah 43.13. <coughs> uh, Munna sister, can you read? Yeah, before the day was, I am I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? See, before the day was, I am. What is the meaning of before the day was? Day means what? Day means a period. You see? Period means a gap between two times, isn't it? A beginning and an end. So, the center gap is called the period. So, the day means what? A beginning is there, end is there. So that is the gap is called as a day. Okay. And that uh, gap is also called as space. That is where we say, you know, leave us a little bit space. What means? Leave us a little bit gap. Space, a day. The Bible says before there was space. Before there was a period. Before there was a day. Huh? I am He. Even before everlasting to everlasting, He was God. Before all these things were created, dear brethren, the Bible says that God existed. You see, we are out of the Milky Way galaxy. <clears throat> you see, we are just seeing hundreds of Milky Way galaxies. You can't even imagine where we are, where is our earth. Compared to these mighty creations of God, you see, the Bible says we are nothing before God. But just a drop of water, it seems. Read Isaiah 40, 15 and 17. Isaiah 40, chapter 15 and 17. Joel, brother, can you read? Behold, the nation are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance, behold, he taketh of the azels as a very little thing. All nations before him are as nothing. 
and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. See, the Bible says, dear brethren, all the nations, you see, in their might, in their power, in their pride, in their ego, in their status, in front of God, there is just a drop of bucket. Imagine if there is a drop of water in the bucket, will you, will you really worry about the drop? You oh, one drop of water is wasting. Please, please pluck it out. Please bring it out. No. We are like a dust in the balance. If there is a little bit of dust in the weighing balance, will we really worry about it? No. Even the great islands, all nations before him are nothing. Then where are we before God? All the nations, imagine the great powerful nations. Today everybody wants to live in America because oh, very sophisticated, very beautiful nation, comfortable nation. Even that one before God is nothing. You know, mathematical way, if you want to demonstrate nothing means it is zero. The Bible says in Isaiah 40 verse 17 that we are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Nothing means zero. Less than nothing means what? Less than zero. Is there something that is less than zero? In mathematics, yes. Minus value. Dear brethren, that is the love which God has demonstrated upon us. Though we are nothing, we are Minus value. God has given his son. Imagine dear brethren to die on the cross for us. Therefore David knew this one. The wonderful grace of God. Therefore he said. Lord. <laughs> when I consider the heaven. What is man? That thou should be aware of him. Read Psalms 8. 3 and 4. Psalm 8, chapter verse 3 and 4. Amar, brother, you are there? Can you read? Psalm 8, chapter verse 3 and 4, brother. When I consider the heavens, the work of the uh, fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou had ordained, what is man the, and that thou art uh, mindful of him, and the, and the son of man that thou visited him? Hey. He says, when I consider the heaven, lot of stars, you see magnificent galaxies, the moon, the stars, everything which those created. What is man learned? Is nothing. He is just the dust of the balance. He is just a drop of water in the bucket. Why should you be mindful about him? Why should you care about him? Why should you come and visit him? When he has left you, when he has sinned against you, though you have been gracious to him, though he has been giving your son and made a beautiful plan and in that plan given the fallen mankind an opportunity, that is the reason David says, what is man, Lord? The Bible says, my hand has created all these things, sir. And if God calls, everything will stand together. It seems. He calls each and every star and controls the mighty universe. Have you ever heard a news <clears throat> about a star crash? Have you ever heard about a news that today there's a bombardment happened in the mighty universe? Don't you, brother? We have heard a breaking news. Suddenly the plane crashed. But uh, even after so many, so many years, we haven't heard even one news of a crash in the universe. That is our God. Therefore, Moses says, even before there was a mountain, even before the earth or the world was formed, even before everything, everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. 
you see there's no beginning there's no end you see for such a god uh, you see imagine such a mighty creator we are all nothing before him you know what does the bible say god is so humble that he says i will come and stay with you read isaiah 57:15 <clears throat> isaiah 57:15 uh, munna sister can you read For thus says the high and lofty one that inhabited in eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. See, what does he say? Thus says the high and the lofty one. Who inhabited eternity? You know, it is like a greeting God, as if He is very, very great. Of course, He is great. Imagine if a king is being welcomed in the court. How will he be welcomed? The king of king, the mighty warrior who destroys so and so nation, is coming. Everybody, please welcome. That is what the Bible says. The high and the lofty one that inhabit eternity, whose name is holy, who dwelleth in high and the holy place. Imagine, he is dwelling in a holy place. No iniquity, no sin, none of the unholy things are with him. He says, the one who is living in such a holy place, <clears throat> such a high place, you know. Which is the next place he stays? He also stays with him, who is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Imagine, dear brethren, such a great God. After dwelling in heaven, the other place he comes and dwells is within us. It seems, if you have a broken heart. God will be with us. Therefore, Job <clears throat> says, Oh, the greatness of God, who can number his years, his uh, wisdom is uh, can't be searched out at all. You see, who can number the age of God? God is infinite. As space is infinite, his age is infinite. He has no beginning and no end. Solomon knew this one very well. Therefore, while dedicating the temple, he told, Lord, what I am, what I am, what am I? Ah, you are so great, but the temple which I have built is nothing before you got. You see? Read <clears throat> Second Chronicles 2.6. Uh, Ashish Padar, can you read Second Chronicles 2.6? Or who is able to build him a house, seeing the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain him? Who am I then that I should build him a house, save only to burn sacrifice before him? See, even the heavens of heaven, Lord, even the heavens, the mighty universe which you created cannot contain you. For all the creation, who am my Lord? A small dust. I should build a house unto you. That to burn sacrifices to you. That is the greatness of our God. He is so humble that he desires to stay with us, dear brethren. Therefore, there is no God like this. He is the only one. He is the Redeemer of Israel. He is the King of Israel. There is no God like this. Isaiah 44, 6. Isaiah 44, 6. Romy Sister, can you read? <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord, the King of the Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. And beside me there is no God. I am the first. I am the last. 
the god who has no beginning and end he is the first he is the last there is no the god beyond this one at all dear brethren therefore you see god asks a question is there any god beside me please let me know if there is a god who is like this please let me know there can't be any other god like this isaiah 44:8 isaiah 44:8 joel brother can you read Pray, fear ye not, neither be afraid, have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it. Ye are even my witness, is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God, I know not. You see, any. is there any God beside me? Yeah, yeah, is there a God? I know not. there can't be any god like this one dear brother and therefore god says i won't give my glory to anybody you see and he doesn't give his glory to any of the idols or the images therefore god forbids idol worship you see <clears throat> there's none with god beside him and his glory is going to give to none read isaiah 40 verse 18 id isaiah 40 verse 18 munna uh, sister can you read to whom then will he liken god or what likeness will he compare unto him see can you compare this god to anything else is there any comparison no therefore when we need to speak about god we can't compare it to anybody dear brother there is nothing that can be compared to god you can just see his creation and appreciate him you see ha huh? therefore in romans apostle paul says ha huh? oh depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of god how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out for who hath known the mind of the lord Or who had been his counselor, or who had first given to him, and it should be requested to him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things. To whom be glory for ever. Amen. Such a magnificent God, such a high and a lofty one, who has ever given his counsel, who has been his teacher, who has been his guide, dear brethren. None, dear brethren, none. He is our Almighty, supreme God. There is none like Him, and Jesus is His first ever creation. When God decided to create anything, the first thing He created was His own Son. Read Proverbs eight, chapter verse thirty and thirty-one. Amar brother, can you read Proverbs chapter eight, verse thirty and thirty-one? then i was by him as one brought off with him and i was daily his delight rejoicing always before him rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth and my uh, de delight were with the son of man very good it is i was by him as one brought up with him daily god's delight it seems dear brother just imagine if our children are playing before us how happy we will be that is the way it was with jesus it seems sir god seeing jesus growing before him daily he was god's delight so always rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth his delight was with sons of men hence when jesus was given the opportunity to go pay the ransom he readily came and died for us dear brethren <clears throat> just you know the creation of earth the earth is called as the ninth planet in our solar system why did god ever create as the ninth planet he could have created the first one or else he could have created his favorite number 7 but why did he create ninth planet because 
that the exact that is the exact position where earth can receive correct <clears throat> proper sunlight for man and for cultivation for various things sir imagine if god would have created us in a place of mercury you know what's the temperature in mercury it is minus 200 degree fahrenheit to plus 800 degree fahrenheit it seems if we were created in there we would have become what kebab or else we would become ice frozen or else if god is created uh, in pluto it was really more than 1500 uh, the minus 4500 degree temperature you see we couldn't have sustained life or we couldn't have lived at all but god created this earth for man to live read isaiah 45:18 joel brother can you read isaiah 45:18 <clears throat> for thus said the lord that created the heavens god himself that from the earth and made it he had established it he created it not in vain he formed it to be inhabited i am the lord and there is no there is none else god himself has said is from the earth and established it he created it not in vain to be a waste place he created for man not he may dwell it seems you know what is the meaning of this god so much of meaning dear brethren you know what is the speed that earth uh, moves you see huh? actually earth rotates at the speed of 18 miles per second it rotates on its own axis at 18 miles per second imagine what do you know what is the meaning of 18 miles per second 18 miles means what huh? i can reach nepal in how many minutes uh, 10 minutes uh, not even that many, even faster than one such speed is the speed of uh, earth on its own axis it seems uh, are we feeling any jerk we don't even feel that one so smoothly everything is going now you see huh eh? now why god has made uh, so uh, speed for the earth uh, you know it is actually you see <clears throat> to counter the gravitation and pull of the sun it seems or else the earth doesn't move at such a speed immediately what will happen it seems uh, it will get attracted to the towards the sun it seems uh, and uh, it is because of this speed that uh, every 24 hours there is a one rotation huh? you know what's the speed the earth is revolving around the sun you will be really shocked to listen this one it is 66000 miles per hour we are traveling at such a speed without shock absorbers without break we don't even feel anything dear brethren it is because of such a speed that we have seasons each and every year complete circle it makes uh, dear brethren if there is little bit of uh, difference in the speed one side of the earth will completely become a desert other side of the earth will completely become ice systems you see and uh, just see this earth uh, how god has made habitable for a uh, man he has put a gravitational pull he has given us oxygen you see the gravitation god has created have you ever wondered gravitation why is it required if you are in space it will be like this we can't even eat pleasurably very very difficult even the water also you can't swallow everything will come out in bubbles vacuum you see but god has made you see gravitation so that nothing from the earth goes out of the earth nothing escapes the earth you know and one of the beautiful uh, uh, power of this uh, you see uh, what do you say uh, the gravitation is that if anything enters the earth atmosphere as soon as it comes uh, by the time it reaches the earth the uh, things will be totally burnt out it seems that is the power of the earth atmosphere and in the atmosphere god has given different layers ozone layer is the atmosphere ionosphere lithosphere why for man's benefit uh, ionosphere ions are moving that is the way we receive mobile communication i am transmitting i am telecasting i am speaking and speaking to you live how is it uh? the ions are traveling uh, you see seconds it's tra- getting transmitted to nepal seconds not even one second less than a second 
who has created this one dear brethren it is our mighty god you know huh? when the rain comes usually there is a great thunder and showers come no huh? the thunder uh, and uh, you see uh, thunder showers uh, uh, lightning all these things happen so we fear you know scientifically when the clouds come together the charges uh, they react uh, together and lightning form it seems uh, when the lightning forms uh, you see it uh, mixes with uh, water rain water and it comes uh, as nitrogen dioxide uh, you see and that nitrogen is a natural fertilizer therefore whenever you observe after a rain the next day the plants would have you see grown very well why is it uh, because that's a natural fertilizer which god is sending from uh, the sky imagine dear brethren this the trees you see as i told you what do we put for the trees and the plants uh, just some uh, you see garbage some dung you see some uh, all things which are waste and put water do we put filter water oh ozone water oh ozone purified water we put no do we put sugar salt nothing but imagine that plant sucks out everything from the roots transmits from the roots to the tip of the you see plant each and every leaf veins the strings travel and what happens flower comes flower buds then pollination happens then fruit comes out yes papa just to taste the fruit and see as soon as we keep in our mouth you see the water comes out uh, it gives us strength uh, proteins vitamins carbohydrates everything is there imagine a coconut tree so tall it is there huh? water uh, it goes up from the root you see to the top filter water everything will go inside the coconut tender coconut soft jelly like thing beautiful to eat Uh, in hot summer, if we drink this tender coconut, how do we feel? It really soothes our body. Really controls the temperature, dear brother. And just imagine the mind of God, who has given this counsel to God that you create all these things, dear brother. And imagine mango, variety, variety mango, sir. Sir, you, you come to India and show it to you. Huh? more than 100 types of mangoes are there you see each and every mango is different to taste this is our god dear brethren have you ever seen this uh, <clears throat> insect fireflies come to my house i'll show you the night a lot of fireflies imagine a small insect it is having so much of power generates light can we generate light in our body after doing lot of friction also not possible small insect you see it develops the brain it travels guiding its way path in the night what a wonderful creation of god dear brain have you ever wondered the creation of a kangaroo you see a mom with a child the child will always be sitting in the mom's womb You see, and that pouch is waterproof. You know, even though the kangaroo goes inside the depth of the water, not even a drop of water will enter its limbs. You see, dear brethren, even after having a lot of technology, we can't create such a waterproof bag. So many people they dived in the water to see Titanic. They never came off. It blasted. But see the power of God, dear brethren. You see, and see the creation of ourselves. what beautifully this factory is being created dear brethren food we eat the food goes to the stomach it breaks into pieces ha huh? ah uh, sulfuric uh, hydrochloric acid is there it breaks uh, into pieces and dilutes uh, all the you see food and uh, destroys all the you see waste products and sends it to the intestine and as it goes on there also again filtration happens the blood capillaries are there they pull out the energy You see how they pull out the oxygen and transmit, mix it with the blood, and blood uh, in blood uh, proteins, vitamins, uh, and uh, what do you say? <clears throat> uh, oxygen also mixes and and goes to the lungs, uh, various parts of the body. 
and heart keeps on functioning like a generator. No non-stop. You see, we are so much tired after working for eight hours. We, we are dead tired. We go and sleep in the house. As ever, heart asked us the permission. Oh, master, please give me one second time. Please give me at least one five minutes time. I'll rest and come back. Can we give it rest? The involuntary muscles run inside us, continuously functioning. The brain, the lungs, you see, the kidneys, they're continuously functioning. God has given so much of power. What is that food that we're giving? We're just giving a little bit of food, small food. What are we eating? Some bread, some egg, some rice. It will cost not even 100 rupees. Imagine if there is an organ failure, how expensive it is. Can we replace it? No, in mother's womb it is growing. This is our God. You see, just a small zygote developing to various forms, eyes, ears, nose, thinking capacity, brain, blood. This is our God. And David says, Oh Lord, how great is your thought towards man. Read Psalm 139, 16-17. Ashish Brother, can you read Psalm 139, 16-17? <clears throat> Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, in the book, all my numbers were written, which in continuance were present, when as if there was none of them, how precious also are thy thoughts unto me. O God, how great is the sum of them. See, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect. In thy books, all my members were written, which is countenance were fashioned. When I said, as it were, none of them. You see, there's so many scanning machines. They can't scan properly. David says, you have seen it from your eyes. When there was nothing, no members, none of the body organs were clearly formed. Though I've seen it, Lord, how precious also are thy thoughts unto me. Beautiful day, brethren. How precious are God's thoughts towards mankind. He's given us two eyes. If God had given one eyes, how bad, how, how ugly we would have looked. You see, only one eye is wavering. How do you put a spectacle? You see, very difficult. If God would have given two nose, how awkward we would have looked. You see, but God has placed one nose with two channels. He could have placed two to separate channels. No, no. See the creation of man. You can cleanly, symmetrically cut it pieces. The exact portion will come out. That is God. Two hands he has created. Two legs he has created. He could have created one leg. No, jump and go. I'll give you only one hand. You've seen too much. You see? That is the reason God has given only one mouth. Two ears to listen. We should be very cautious to listen about God. And speak less. This is the beautiful creation of God. And in the blood you see lot of things I can speak. In the blood you see RBC is there. WBC is there. What is the power of RBC? What is the power of WBC? RBC carries oxygen and nutrition to the body. WBC protects it. You see? Whenever there is a cut, whenever we fall down, we have a small injury. You see, what happens? Sir? The blood comes out. It will come out continuously. It will stop after a few seconds. Why? WBC immediately rushes to the spot and immediately, you know, the blood actually it makes a net, it's fibrinogen. Immediately it seals that wound so that nothing goes out from the body. Blood clot. That is God's power, dear brethren. And nothing from outside, the dust or you see the bacteria enters inside. Even if it enters, there's a warfare that happens and immediately comes out in the form of pus. That is you see, the creation of man. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. Just see the creation of I. The, you see, the, today the scientist says, it's more than a, a hundred or thousand megapixel camera, it seems. Per minute, it zooms out and zooms in so many times, it seems, sir. Isn't it? If you use the camera like this one, what will the company say? Sir, use it delicately, sir. We won't give guarantee. But this eye is 
God has given the beautiful guarantee. From birth to death, nothing will happen to your eyes. You see? So yeah, you just test and see. Open your eyelids. Try to put your hand inside the eyes. You can't do it for your own eyes. Very difficult. Huh? You see? But uh, the Bible says God has protected this one. You are the apple of my eye. He that toucheth you, toucheth me. You see? When we, if we take a glass, how do we take a glass? A piece of glass, if I give you to take a piece of glass uh, very delicately, how will you take it? Uh? You wrap it in a paper, or keep it in a pocket very safely. Why? Something happens, the glass will damage you, it will cut. But where God has kept the glass, you know, very, very sensitive place, God has kept the glass in our eyes. Not two, it moves forward, moves backward, left to right, up to down, everything. It goes round, circle also. Have you ever felt any jerk, dear brother? See our bones, see our joints. Huh? When we move around, no sound. But see the vehicle, lot of joints are there. Even if you put grease oil, kar, 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 the sound will come. Huh? This is our God. Do we put oil? Do we put grease? Rarely do we go to doctor once in a year. Huh? Self-protection God has given us. Therefore, huh? such a God, there is none else. The Bible says, the God of Israel never sleeps nor slumbers. Read Psalms 121.4. Uh, Muna sister, can you read Psalms 121.4? Behold, he that keepeth Israel thy Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. What do you mean by slumber? When we are having deep sleep, when your sleep is troubled, we can't work properly. We'll keep on dozing. Yeah. Yeah. We'll feel like sleeping. Isn't it? The God of Israel neither slumbers, it seems. Neither does he sleep. Other gods, you need to put superbata early in the morning. Oh, please get up. Come, we will give you a bath. We will put clothes. No. The God of Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. Dear brethren, our God never faints. He is never weary. His, his ears are always open to our prayers. Isaiah 40, 28. Joel brother, can you read? Isaiah 40, 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that he everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching for his understanding. He never get tired. He never says, come tomorrow. No, today's shop is closed, come at the right time. He's always attentive. He's always open for our prayers, dear brethren. Therefore, Job, after understanding all these things, you know, what does he say? Oh Lord, how little a portion is heard of him. You see, who knows about the such God, dear brethren? Everybody has misunderstood such a God. The thing that God is like this, Lord is like that. Even our Christians, so poor, no? You see, it's a very pathetic thing that the Christians believe that our God is three in one. Where does the Bible say? God has given so much things about himself. If he was three in one, or one in three, or one of the same in three, he would have clearly told us why he would have kept his mystery. A blasphemous doctrine from the devil to deceive us, to draw us away, the one true God, dear brethren. See, Job 26, 14. Job 26, 14. Roman Easter, can you read? No. These are part of his ways, but how little a portion is 
heard of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? Who can understand how little about this God is heard in this world? Not many know about this one God, dear brethren. They will all know in the resurrection in the thousand years. Therefore, this God has got beautiful four characters. And that is given to us in Revelation 4, chapter verse 6 and 7. Ashish brother, can you read Revelation 4, chapter 6 and 7? <clears throat> okay. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal, in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before him behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face the man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. So here, if you see, <clears throat> in the midst of the throne and round about the throne, there were four beasts, it seems, of the run. And the first beast was like a lion, the second beast was like a calf, third like a face of a man, the fourth like a flying eagle. What does it mean? You see, something which is in between the throne, around the throne, that is related to God. These are the four characters of God that are symbolically mentioned in the book of Revelation. You see, lion. Lion means what? Lion is the king of the Changan. The power. The power of God. Imagine what all we have seen today. The creation. The mighty creation that shows the power of God. But God never violates his power. And never misuses his power. He's got so much of power. You see, if Jesus would have prayed, 72,000 angels would have dropped down immediately. But God did not exercise his power. You see, God did not send these angels to protect his son. No. He withhold his power. Dear brethren, but when did he demonstrate his power? In the resurrection of Jesus. You see, and justice, calf, in olden days, they used to sacrifice calf for justice, to sacrifice, to satisfy God's justice. What is the justice of God? When Adam made a small fruit, God could have easily forgiven. No, he tells us to forgive 70 times 7. No, so why doesn't he forgive? If he would have forgiven, then they wouldn't have been justice to God. Everybody would have misunderstood. Oh, he has sinned. Let me also sin. Oh, God, you have forgiven him. Forgive me also. Dear brethren, that is justice. It never violates justice. Injustice, it never suffers. Justice, dear brethren. Blood for blood, eye for eye. Love, the face of a man, you know. Man is the one who is having love compared to everybody. You see? But today, man is in an hopeless situation. Nobody has so much of real pure love. Everybody has selfish love. But originally, man when he was created, he has so much of love. He took care of the garden of Eden of all the animals. So affectionate he was. Love. This is the love of God. You know, where exactly the love of God was demonstrated? Jesus on the cross, he cried, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What was the reply of God, you know? My son, I love the world so much that I am ready to give it to you. That was the love of God. Last, the wisdom, the flying eagle. The eagle has a very sharp eye set, the highest of the flying bird. From there it sees his prey. The sharp eye set, eyes means wisdom, understanding. Understanding of God, the wisdom of God. What all things he has, he has done, dear brother. Beautiful, magnificent wisdom of God. We can't completely comprehend God. This is our almighty God, Yahweh. This is our almighty God, Jehovah. This is our Almighty God. I am that I am who has no end and no beginning. Okay? So I'll send you the notes. Please uh, go through the notes. If anybody has uh, having any doubts or questions, they can